Hi, I'm Paula from Paula's DIY Decor and welcome to my channel. I'm the crafter from Down Under and today I want to share with you how I made this beautiful chinoiserie inspired wall decor. To get started you're going to need some white acrylic paint, some uh, downloadable free printables of some chinoiserie ginger jars, I'll put the link in the description box below, some picture frames, I had some already in my craft room, and some chinoiserie inspired napkins, as well as a large canvas. This one was 24 by 24 inches. When I removed the wrapping from the picture frame, I quickly realized that these were already um, made up pictures for a, a child's nursery. So I then uh, decided to paint over the Winnie the Pooh imagery with some white acrylic paint. To print off the chinoiserie ginger jar downloadable printables, I just cut down some of this 12 by 12 white linen cardstock that I had in my craft room to a size that fit into my printer. And I also measured the inside of the picture frame and then created the size of the downloadable printable to the size of the insert. And that way, by using a light, faint, dark gray line, I could then easily cut out the image to the size of the inside of this picture frame. Then I decided that I wanted to cover, or I wanted to make the picture frames gold. I thought it would look really nice against the chinoiserie blue and white design, but I didn't want to paint the picture frames, mainly because I couldn't find my gold paint, but I did have some of this um, vinyl gold contact paper. So I just covered the edges of this picture frame using this beautiful gold uh, contact paper that I picked up in my local hardware store. So here you can see the gold frame against the original uh, wooden frame. I decided that I didn't actually like the gold frame. I thought it was too kind of like a yellowy gold. Um, I just didn't think it would go with the overall design. So uh, the beauty about contact paper is that I could take it off. So using just a glue stick, I adhered the image to this picture frame and I think it looked absolutely stunning. That white linen cardstock came up absolutely beautifully. If you could see it in real life, you can see it's a, it's a gorgeous matte white uh, paper and the, the blue ink shows up absolutely gorgeous. So here you can see me adhering all of the images down into the picture frames. I, I did print out four uh, ginger jar styles. Uh, I could have done six, but four is all I could fit against the backdrop. I am going to hang this above my fireplace and my mantel. And uh, then I decided that the wooden frames really weren't doing the image justice, uh, particularly as I am going to mount these picture frames against the chinoiserie napkin background. So I had some blue acrylic in my uh, on hand and I decided to paint the blue frame, the frame in this gorgeous darkish sort of cobalty blue color. And then using a baby wipe, I just wiped off the excess of the paint just to dull the blue down a little bit. And then you can really see the grain through the blue acrylic paint and it turned out absolutely perfect. I thought that was exactly the look I was uh, after and I really think it made the image stand out. Now normally you would paint before you would hear the image but uh, it took me three goes to decide what colour to do it. But then I didn't stop there because I really did want to give the picture frames a little bit of something extra. So I used this beautiful bronze Crayola pen to kind of smudge and smear little bits of bronze and, or a copper look, sorry, uh, around the edges of the picture frame. And this really gave it beautiful dimension, a little bit of glitter, a little bit of shine to the edges and that double color of the navy and the gold or the bronze looked absolutely stunning uh, when you saw it bouncing off the sides of this gorgeous picture frame. 
Then I used the canvas mat, I prepared the canvas mat, I got the uh, paper napkins and I just peeled away the layers until I got to the print side and using a little bit of Mod Podge or actually a generous amount of Mod Podge, I then covered the entire canvas mat with this Mod Podge and then gently started to lay down the paper napkin, this beautiful blue and white Chinoiserie inspired paper napkin. I have used it before, uh, but I just, I absolutely love it. And I thought it would make a gorgeous backdrop to the picture frames uh, to be mounted against. And I did uh, make sure that I covered the sides of this canvas mat with the napkin. So it looked like the design went all the way around um, and then use some Mod Podge over the top. I did gently dab the Mod Podge over the top of the paper napkin. Uh, so that would protect the canvas and also give it a nice um, wave to adhere the glue of the picture frames onto the napkin later on. Smooth out the wrinkles, I just used a bit of cling wrap or, um, or, or film, a plastic film, to just uh, smooth out all of the wrinkles and make the paper napkins nice and smooth on the canvas surface. Next I laid out all of my picture frames with the Chinoiserie ginger jars down in a pattern that I liked best. You can pick any type of pattern, you can space them out a little bit more. I just uh, put them in a square sort of two up top, two down the bottom pattern, fairly close to each other because I wanted to see that gorgeous Chinoiserie blue and white inspired pattern of the canvas showing. And then just using some hot glue adhered all four picture frames to the canvas. Now, if you're new to this channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. I love to create beautiful craft DIYs, seasonal decor and gorgeous tablescapes. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for all those beautiful messages that you leave me. I do love reading them and responding to them and you truly inspire me. I just think the crafting community is so generous and so beautiful and I really, really enjoy putting these videos together. Consider subscribing to my channel if you're liking this video and hit that bell so that you can be alerted every time I upload a video. So here you can see the finished project. I think it looks absolutely stunning in my lounge room. I love the blue and white. I think those pr downloadable prints are absolutely gorgeous. The gold and navy picture frames turn out gorgeous. I think the whole thing's come together so beautiful. And if you like blue and white, this is certainly a gorgeous piece of wall decor that you can use all year round. Next, I'd like to share with you how I made this beautiful Chinoiserie Jars cushion. Now, using the same downloadable prints so that I could coordinate this design throughout my lounge room, I just cut out the actual design of each ginger jar and I laid them in a row on a piece of white fabric that I had in my craft room. This fabric is some leftover fabric I had from my Christmas seasonal decor and then I just used some Mod Podge to adhere the paper onto the fabric. Now you might be wondering, oh my gosh, is that going to be a bit strange to have paper on fabric but honestly once you have used the Mod Podge and lay down this design onto a piece of fabric then what I did was I used some more Mod Podge to just seal in this design and you can't even tell that it was started off as uh, that beautiful white linen paper. It's pliable, it's soft, it moves with the cushion and I thought it turned out fantastic. It's such an easy DIY. Anyone can do this and frankly, it just gives your lounge room that extra pop of colour and gives you some coordinating style when you are decorating your lounge room with that beautiful blue and white chinoiserie style. Mm -hmm. 
once the ginger jars were dry, I then flipped my fabric inside out and then using some hot glue, just sealed the edges of this cushion cover together. Now you can sew these together if you're good with a machine or hand sew them together. This is seasonal decor for me, so I just use some hot glue and it works perfectly fine. So once I had finished doing three sides of my cushion cover, I flipped it back inside out again so that the uh, ginger jars were on the outside. Make sure that I uh, really get those corners in and then using some uh, pillow stuffing, I just popped in some of that uh, pillow filler or cushion filler into my cushion and then started to seal the remaining edge. Now this is where, this is probably the trickiest part of a no sew cushion where uh, you just gotta be careful when you are flipping uh, the cushion in and making some folds so that you don't have any jagged edges, not to burn your fingers. I did have my glue gun on a low heat, that helps a lot. You'll notice that this cushion was quite long. That's because the fabric remnant I had was fairly small, so I had to work with the, the size that I had. If I made it again, I'd probably make it more square and a little bit larger, so it sits more proportional to the couches on my lounge setting. But nevertheless, I found this beautiful blue and white striped ribbon that I just edged this cushion cover with, and I think it just really dialed up this cushion uh, a notch and I really really loved it. I thought it ended up looking a lot more professional and just edgy and I really liked it. the completed cushion, a gorgeous blue and white ginger jar style inspired cushion made on an absolute budget and one that you can use all year round. Well I hope you've enjoyed this video, I thoroughly enjoyed making it with you, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye!